as you might be able to tell by my uh, uh, gray hair, uh, what little I've got, I've been in the business a long time. And I remember when I first got in my first year uh, doing full-time, uh, what we call retail advising, dealing with the individual clients. Uh, I remember a number of clients who said, oh, I can't invest now. They've got the Iran-Contra scandal going on. And if you don't remember, this was a big deal uh, politically. Uh, it ended up with the Secretary of Defense and the National Security Advisor uh, being indicted. And I think uh, uh, the National Security Advisor actually was convicted uh, in that. And it was a constitutional crisis that really shook up the country and caused investors to be fearful. And all it takes is a few investors to stay out of the market to cause the market to go down. If the number of buyers or number of sellers is the same and the number of buyers drops off, uh, all of a sudden you have an imbalance which affects the market. So a lot of these boogeymen, as I like to call them, uh, can affect the markets. But my point here is that, that there are always uh, these boogeymen. And, uh, a little later in 1987, uh, there was a stock market crash caused by rising interest rates. The stock market dropped 23% in one day and, and nobody thought investing would ever be the same again. Uh, in 1990, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. He had the fourth largest army in the world. There were rumors that his soldiers could live for days without water and all sorts of other things that sort of were pretty scary at the time. Uh, in 1992, riots returned to the streets uh, after the Rodney King beating in, in LA and, and all over the country. People were freaking out. Uh, in 1987, or 97, there were currency collapses in Southeast Asia that caused what we call the Asian contagion. And uh, foreign markets dropped by 60% uh, uh, as everybody was shaken up by this. In 1998, uh, President Clinton was impeached. Nobody knew what was going to happen. And uh, investors backed away from the market. And there was a significant collapse uh, in 1998. Y2K rolled around and was followed by the dot-com bust which caused 52% losses in a big index like the S&P 500, 89% losses for the NASDAQ uh, index uh, that took 16 years to recover. Um, so these things really shake people up. In 2008, we had the, uh, the mortgage uh, banking crisis, which caused 56% uh, in the stock market. And we, we've also lived through AIDS epidemic, SARS epidemic, Ebola outbreaks, MRSA, swine flu, bird flu, the Hong Kong flu, and now all the different flavors of, of COVID that we've been dealing with, not to mention countless economic recessions. And so my point is, as bad as things might seem today, there's always been something out there that seemed really bad and shook people up. So um, you have to remember that the brain is sort of wired to react and be more sensitive to negative events and negative uh, news than it is to positive. This is a survival mechanism called negativity bias. The people who discovered this uh, founded what's called a behavioral finance and won a Nobel Prize for it. There's a number of these biases that are just built into us. And people are much more sensitive to negative news and to losses than they are to positive news and gains. But the reality is, is our free market is like a huge river. And if you just you drop a big boulder in the middle of it, there's going to be ripples and things like that. But real quickly, the, the river just adjusts, flows around and keeps on going uh, its merry way. Uh, and that's the way our economy works. It adjusts to things like that. And anyone who's ever bet, bet against the future of the United States has lost. So, uh, don't don't get overly worried about these things that you hear about in the news. Uh, my advice is to forget about it, as they'd say back east. Whatever you're worried about in the markets, the economy is probably going to blow over. And um, no one really knows what the next one is going to look like. It's going to be different enough that it's going to freak people out. But you have to have some confidence that Ryan and I are watching the market every day. We've got our finger on the pulse of the market. And normally before clients are even aware of things, we've already uh, taken action. As Ryan described a few minutes ago, uh, we've been moving out of the market last month and we're just starting to move back in, directed by the, the current state of the market. We don't try and predict things. We react to what actually is happening. We use numbers for 90% of our, uh, our decisions. We don't react 
blindly to news or, or emotionally to news. And that's why we can be valuable to news. We take the emotion out of the investment decisions, which is really a hard thing for uh, the average client to do. Thank you.